In this video, I want to talk to you about a very important definition related to limits. It's what's called the epsilon delta definition of a limit. So let's consider a simple function, f of x is equal to 2x, and that's going to be that function everywhere except for when x is equal to 2. So you notice there's a big hole there. And if that hole were plugged, then of course um, the functional value at 2 would be 4. So let's consider the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. So if I'm approaching 2 from the right, I'm going to be coming in this direction, and we notice that the functional values as I come in that direction are getting closer and closer to that circle. And so the limit as I approach 2 from the right is getting closer and closer to 4. All right now let's do the same thing. Take the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. And remember that the left and right limits are denoted by the minus or plus signs there. So as I'm approaching 2 from the left-hand side, I'm coming in that direction, and the functional values are creeping up towards that open circle. And so that limit from the left is also 4. So the question that I might ask myself is, how close to x equals 2 do I need to get so that y equals 2x differs from 4 by less than, say, a half a unit? So this is an arbitrary question, but really the question we're trying to ask ourselves is, you know, is there a bound around x equals 2 on the x-axis that if I get within that bound, I can assure myself that I'm in some bound around um, the limit, which is 4? So, so namely, if I were able to do something like this, I would say, hey, I'm going to pick x values in a range here. Can I guarantee myself that the y values will be in a range up there? So there's a relationship between what's happening, getting close to the limit point on the x-axis, and how close I get to the actual limit on the y-axis. So let's take a look at our specific example again. We're going to use x equals 2. Our function is going to be y equals 2x, or f of x is equal to 2x, everywhere except for where x is equal to 2. And I want to assure myself that I can find some range around x equals 2 so that um, I'm within a half a unit of the limit point 4. So what am I really saying here? I'm saying that I want 2x minus 4 the absolute value of that to be less than one half because this actually describes that distance, right? So there's my distance. Okay, so I'm going to do some algebra here. So getting rid of the absolute values, remember from algebra that says that minus one half is less than 2x minus 4, which is less than one half. Taking my next algebra step, I'm going to divide everything by 2. So this tells me that minus 1 fourth is less than x minus 2, which is less than 1 fourth. But again, this is just the definition of absolute value again. So I'll go ahead and apply that. So that says the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than a fourth. Well, what is this telling me? This is telling me that um, there's a distance right on the x-axis, because that x is on the x-axis, um, that distance between x and 2 is less than a fourth. That's what that's telling me there. So how to put all this stuff together? Well, here I am. I'm looking at my graph again. And so it's telling me that as long as I pick x values somewhere um, within 2 plus a fourth, which is 9 fourths, and 2 minus a fourth, which is 7 fourths, then I'm guaranteed that my y value will be somewhere between 4 plus a half, which is 9 halves, and 4 minus a half, which is 7 halves. So I've actually found this interval. I know that if I'm in between the 7 fourths and 9 fourths on the x-axis down here, then my y values are going to be somewhere between 9 halves and 3 halves, up here. So there is a relationship between the choices that I make on, for x values on the x-axis, they're close to the limit point x equals 2, and where my outputs come out. All right, so this tells me choose x between 7 fourths and 9 fourths, and I guarantee you that y is going to be between 7 halves and 9 halves. So let's look at the formal definition of a limit, and it looks daunting, but it really isn't. 
So the formal definition says, hey, let f of x be defined on an open interval about x equals c, which is our limit point. We say the limit of f of x as x approaches c is a number l and write, using our notation, limit as x goes to c of f of x equals l, if for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta less than zero such that for all x, if the absolute value of x minus c is greater than zero and less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So what is this definition really telling us? Well, there's a couple of important facts. So first of all, we have some function that's defined on an open interval. That's, that's like our example we had. And we have some prescribed limit point x equals c. We're going to say that that limit actually exists and it's equal to L. That's what this part right here is telling me. If a couple of things happen, well, what has to happen? Well, I can pick myself, and I'm going to use some stuff here, an epsilon greater than zero, and over here a delta greater than zero. These are just small positive numbers. And what has to be true? Well, if I look at the first part here, it says that the absolute value of x minus c has to be greater than 0 and less than delta. So remember, the x is the x-axis value, and it's saying that x minus c, so I've got some interval around my limit point c, and I'm going to choose an x. If x minus c has to be greater than 0, that means I can't choose my x to be the limit point, because remember, when we're talking about limits, we don't care about what's happening at the limit point. And less than delta, that just means that I'm going to pick some value that I'm going to add to my limit point and subtract from my limit point, and that's going to be my interval. And that delta is just going to be some small value, positive value. So this is the distance on the x-axis. All right, so I pick that. Then I know that, now look at the second term over here then what? The absolute value of f of x minus l has to be less than epsilon. Remember, epsilon is just a positive number, and the absolute value of f of x minus l represents the distance between the functional values and the limit. So if I've chosen something in that interval on the x-axis close to c, then I know that my distance here, this distance is on the y-axis, right? That distance of the functional values from my limit on the y-axis has to be smaller than epsilon. So there's a connection between the two. In my next video, I'm going to show you how you can apply this to an example.